Evie, wake up! It's big already! Evie, wake up! Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Zell. Just came home from overtime. <laughs> Two seconds later. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Big Friday! We are live on Facebook and YouTube. I am your host for tonight. My name is Evie, and thank you for being with us and watching us here online. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, Philippines and beyond, please help me welcome my co-host for tonight, Zach! Hi, Zach! Hey, Evie! Good evening! Good evening, everyone! Hi, Zell. Before anything else, let's do a recap. I want to ask our audience and friends here tonight, what is one thing that you have learned from our Work For Him series? Please comment down below. And while waiting, share with us that one thing, Zell. Yes, hi again, everyone. So thank you, Miss Evie, for the beautiful question. You know, I, Zelene Lipita, strongly believe that kidding aside guys you know what i learned so far from this work for him series is that we are not just meant to survive but we are meant to thrive in our work and in wherever god places us it is important to regard work as an opportunity to honor god with all our heart mind and soul how about you guys don't forget to type down below your answers and ooh eb i already saw some people commenting praise god for that how about you eb so far what have you learned from this series thank you for that question zell back to you zell <laughs> just kidding um yeah i learned that i was greatly reminded of the practical points on how to discern god's will at work so first is that we need to surrender our work to the lord and that it's very important that we check god's word for alignment and as we continue to seek him through his word we need to walk step by step in obedience and it's very important that we also have godly counsel alongside with us as we walk and we need to check our circumstances and hopefully by god's grace that we experience god's peace and you know these are very practical points on how do we know or how do we discern, discern god's will for us at work yes right praise god for that evie you know i totally agree with you and you know guys tonight is special and pretty exciting because we have a new setup tonight is actually big cebu's first live message for this year 2021 this means evie that we will have our very own big speaker here from cebu city and before anything else why don't we give a shout out to all first timers and big satellites who are here with us kung saan man kayo sa mundo guys welcome welcome to big cebu here is some virtual hug for you from big cebu family <laughs> zel kung ang nascape ay may kung para kanino ka bumabangon not a sponsored ad by the way in big we also have Ano ang pinasasalamatan mo or our PR or praise reports time. So Zal, I'm truly grateful for this segment because it really helps us have an attitude of gratitude knowing that work or you know circumstances in our lives can really get discouraging and frustrating. So we asked some of our friends from Big Cebu tonight, what do you praise God for this week? Or lately and here are their answers so first we have from Kezia Matthews she says this week I am grateful for all the amazing miracles that God has done in my life I thank God for his great love grace mercy and protection also enabling me to do well in my exams providing for all my needs I thank God Almighty for his faithfulness even when I am unfaithful to Him. Praise God! Praise God for that, Kezia. Indeed, God is the God of all miracles. So we also have here Evie from Gian Jessalem. 
Jian said, I thank God for my recent birthday because I felt most loved. Wow, belated happy birthday to you, Jian. Praise God. God is indeed a God who really has ways of showing us that He loves us. Next, we have Luz Andrino. She shares, When I was in the middle of struggling with fear and with my emotions as I tried to adjust with my new environment, I praise God for how He comforted me through His Word. He gave me a promise that He will never leave nor forsake me. I am amazed that my new co-workers are also Christians. I may not know his specific plans or will, but I know he is true to his promises according to Jeremiah 29.11. Oh, praise God, Luz from United States. Hello there, if you're here with us. And now we also have here from Jed. Jed said, I'm thankful my family is all safe and they get to continue to provide for their families. God never gives up on His children and He constantly realigns me in the path He has planned for me. That was from Jed Pipito. Wow, praise God, Jed. God is indeed our protector and our provider. Amen. Here with us, we also have from Jesse Barreto. Grateful for the Lord's sustenance and provision. We may feel at times that our plans are shattered, but it's great to be reminded that His plans are greater than our plans. His ways are greater than ours. Indeed, the testing of our dependence to God produces total surrender and perseverance. Now we have here lastly from Pinky Valenzona. Pinky said, I praise God that I got to serve my mom better this week and also for the rest this weekend. I was able to refresh in God through His Word yesterday and today. You know, thank you so much guys for sending us your praise report. Indeed, E.B., praise God for His faithfulness and goodness in our lives. We encourage you guys to send your praise reports if you have here in our Big Cebu Facebook page and we'll include it next week. And of course, we'll be praying for you guys. And before we dive in with tonight's message... Why don't we commit this time to worship the Lord through singing praises to Him? As stated in the Bible, in Psalm 100, chapter 2, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Let's ready ourselves for praise and worship. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. This is the promise and truth that we stand upon today. Holy God, so graciously revealed. Word made flesh, you set all captives free. All praise and glory be to the Lamb who was slain on Calvary. Our lasting seasons and changing through the ages, we sing of your timeless renown on solid ground.
passing seasons to change and through the ages we sing of your timeless renown on solid ground we will stand and not be shaken Yes, before we introduce our speaker, we encourage everyone, especially those who are here with us for the first time, to join the breakout session in Zoom after the message. The Zoom link is found in the comment section below and flashed on your screen. All right, and now, join me in welcoming our speaker for tonight's message. He is not new to us. He is an engineering graduate from the De La Salle University in Manila, currently working in their family business and is also currently the singles ministry head for Big Cebu. Help me welcome Timothy Uitingsu. All right, good evening everyone. Welcome to Big Fridays. You know, it's so good to be back preaching to all of you. So before we start tonight, I just want us to open with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you so much for this day that we could gather as, as your people in Big Fridays. Um, it's just so great to have a community where uh, people who would encourage one another, who would uh, push each other, Lord God, towards you. I pray that you would speak to all of us, Lord God, about, about the topic, about work, about um, really being rested in you. I pray that you would speak through me, Lord God, that everything that I would say, Lord God, would be something um, that would encourage and bless all of us, Lord God, and really point us back to you. I pray that we'd also have a, a great time tonight. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so for those of you joining us for the first time, we're currently in a series titled WFH, which usually means work from home, but for this series, it stands for Work For Him. Clever, no? <laughs> Reframing every workday to serve our ultimate boss. And we're currently on the third part of this four-part series, right? Last week, we talked about the external pressures at work, like the increased workload or responsibilities and adjustments that we need to make, like working from home. 
And I hope you guys really enjoyed and were blessed with the panel discussion last week uh, with my sister included. No? So I hope you guys enjoyed there. But, you know, however, there are also internal pressures that we face, like the fear of losing our job or the closing down of our business, the finding of new ways and opportunities to provide for our family or ourselves, and just a sense of restlessness uh, because of the uncertainty of the future. How do we deal with all of these internal struggles? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Did you know that according to PSA, the unemployment rate in Central Visayas is 7.06% right, in January 2021, which is double of last year. Right? Many people are under extraordinary stress because of, of joblessness or underemployment or uh, inadequate wages. Someone said that workers and families are in poverty that this generation of workers have never experienced before. And I agree, you know, I remember talking to a gas station assistant whose work schedule was reduced from working six days a week to only three days a week, making a total monthly salary of about 6,000 pesos. I mean, how do, you, how do you survive with below minimum wages and a family to feed? A lot of businesses, especially in the hospitality sector, are financially bleeding since the start of COVID, right? And many employees are looking to you for their income. How do you provide for all of them when the business is already bleeding and struggling? Can the business still stay afloat or is it time to call it quits? I know that these fears come from a sincere desire to provide for your family or ourselves or our employees. But is it at all possible or likely that these fears reveal that our job, business, or wherever we get our income from has become our security rather than the Lord? And so tonight I want us all to learn to rest, right? to rest in this difficult season. And what does rest stand for? Well, I want us all to respond in faith, to encourage one another, and to surrender and trust in God. And we will be learning from the life of David. Though our circumstances may be somewhat different since there's nothing like COVID in the Bible, I'm sure we will still be able to learn something on how David was able to deal with the loss of his position, and also future stability. And so how did David find rest in, this, in a season of much difficulty and uncertainty? Well, let's find out as we read 1 Samuel chapter 21 to 23. Yes, it's three chapters long. And so to give you a short background, this is the time in David's life when he was becoming more and more successful as a military man, right? His reputation was now threatening a very insecure King Saul. Um, because of this, King Saul wanted to kill David, and so David had to hide and run away. This leads us to the first lesson we learn in David's life in this story, and also the first point of our message, which is that we should respond in faith. Respond in faith faith. In 1 Samuel 21 verse 1, it says, David went to the town of Nob to see Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he saw him. You know, like, wh wh why, are you, why are you here? Why are you alone? Right? Why is no one with you? In this story, the first thing David does after running away from King Saul, thereby losing his position and future stability, is to go to the priest. Sounds nice, right? It's like he's going to God for help. Except that the first thing, uh, or the thing that he asks the priest is, wait for it, a sword, right? What? In verse 8, David asked Ahimelech, do you have a spear or sword? The king's business was so urgent that I didn't even have time to grab a weapon. Um... 
I only have the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, the priest replied. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the aphid. Take that if you want it, for, you know, there's nothing else here. There's nothing like it, David replied. Give it to me, right? And so David lies why he's there. And I think Ahimelech senses this and also his fear or anxiety. When Ahimelech says, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, it's like he's reminding David of what he did before, of how he won against Goliath, right? Because of faith. It's like he's saying, don't you remember what you said before? When you were younger and full of faith, you said that just as God gave you strength to kill the lion and the bear, that He would also give you strength to kill Goliath, right? Wasn't it faith in God that gave you victory over Goliath? Why are you now trusting in Goliath's sword? Right? You, you of all people should know that this sword is useless. It's just going to give you false security. You know, it's going to protect you somewhat physically, but God is our ultimate protector. And there is no one, there is none like Him. Amen. What a great reminder for all of us. And so David escaped from Saul and went to King Achish of Gad, Gath. So we see here in the map, right, from Nob at the top portion of the map, David, this is where David met Ahimelech. And so he goes all the way to the west, right, to the country of the Philistines, the city of Gath. So David not only wants Goliath's sword, but he also wants to find protection in Goliath's hometown. It looks like David really wants to become Goliath. And so why does David go to Gath? Well, maybe because he wanted to become a mercenary for the Philistines. After all, he was a very successful military leader and warrior. But things didn't turn out as planned because the Philistines rejected him, and so he had to run away. Later, David went to Mitzpah in Moab, where he asked the king, Please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. But just two verses later, we read that one day, the prophet Gad told David, leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. So David went to the forest of Cherith. Okay, so let's go back to the map. Uh, again, from Nob, where David met Ahimelech, he goes to the west, right? The country of the Philistines, the city of Gath. And then he goes all the way to the other side, in the country of Moab, the city of Mitzpah. And then we read that the prophet Gad told him to go back, and so he has to go back to the forest of Cherith, right? So it's really funny how David goes from one foreign enemy country to another to seek for protection, and yet he realizes that this is not the place God wants for him, right? God is saying, I don't want you in Philistine territory, nor in Moab territory. I want you back where you belong in Judah, which is this middle strip right here. Just like David in this story, have we been responding to our season or situation in fear or in faith? Right? When we become so consumed with fear and anxiety, we don't think straight, right? Our decisions might look good on the surface, but when we're so focused on our survival, we don't really see the repercussions and long-term effects of our decisions. You know, we become something like a headless chicken running around. You know, I gotta find a sword. I gotta find a sword. Oh, Goliath sword. Nice. Thank you, Lord. Right? And then I gotta go to an enemy place. Uh, nope. Okay, maybe another enemy place. Uh, nope. You know, and we're just all over the place. It's the same with us, right? Whenever we're so consumed with fear. And so, as a businessman, when I'm so fearful and anxious, I have a tendency, um, or I'm tempted to, 
not declare everything I sell, thinking that I have to do this in order for my business to survive. You know, you don't understand. Or maybe I'm tempted to let go of some of my employees and not pay them the right amount. As an employee, maybe you're tempted to find more work or sidelines because you're scared of your future stability. You know, packing up your schedule so full, the way it is just too much and you become stressed and burned out. Um, your priorities have shifted and so you know, sadly, you no longer have time for God or church. Do not let our fears dictate our actions. And so it seems like David, in this story, is always responding in fear. But as time goes on and as God continues to mold him, we will see that David actually starts responding in faith rather than in fear. Jumping to chapter 23, one day news came to David that the Philistines were at Keilah stealing grain. David asked the Lord, should I go and attack them? Yes, go and save Keilah, the Lord told him. But David's men said, we're afraid even here in Judah. We certainly don't want to go to Keilah to fight the whole Philistine army. So David asked the Lord again. And again, the Lord replied, go down to Keilah for I will help you conquer the Philistines. So David and his men went to Keilah. They slaughtered the Philistines and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Keilah. Wow! Isn't David's transformation from fear to faith so beautiful? David wanted to defend the Israelites from the Philistines. And we know that this wasn't an easy decision because as his men have said, they're already afraid of King Saul chasing them. And then you want to add to their list of problems by attacking the Philistine army? Are you crazy? But instead of cowering in fear and just focusing on survival, David asked the Lord's guidance, right? He submitted himself to the Lord's authority. And despite the Philistine army having a greater force, David defeated them because of God's promise and God's power. Again, we are all reminded to respond in faith, just like David in the story, not in fear. Let us respond in faith rather than in fear. And now let's go to the second lesson we learn in David's life in this story, is that we should encourage one another. Encourage one another. Let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 22. It says, So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam, Soon, his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt or who were just discontented, until David was a captain of about 400 men. When life's pressures come, sometimes it can just be too much to bear alone. That's why God is so gracious and kind to send other people along our way. The verse says that when David left Gath, God not only sent his family or relatives, but also other people, right, who were in trouble, who had the same position as him, who could relate with him. And with all of these people, it's tempting to think, wow, you know, God sent all these people to encourage me. And yet, what we read in the verse is that these people were actually in need of a leader, and that leader was David. And we think, wait, 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 wait. How can I help them when I'm the one in need of help, right? And that's what I've been encouraging a lot of people lately during the season, is that if we keep looking inward, we will become depressed. Instead, let us look outward. Let us let us love people by encouraging one another. After all, I think that's what God wants us to do, especially during this difficult season. And so let me ask, when was the last time we went out of our way to encourage someone, right? 
Look around us. There are so many people sagging under the heavy burden of fear or anxiety or restlessness. Find someone with a burden and help them with it, right? All it takes is a simple, hey, how are you? You know, just a chat and then listen. After all, we, we all have burdens and, and God doesn't want us to bear them alone, right? And, you know, the great thing about this is that God not only sent His family, but someone else to encourage Him even more. Going to 1 Samuel chapter 20, 23, it says, Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God. Don't be afraid, Jonathan reassured him. My father will never find you. Which is funny, you know, because just a verse before, it says Jonathan found David. So I don't know if I'd be encouraged by that. Just kidding. But I'll be encouraged by the next thing he says. You know, he says, you are going to be king of Israel and I will be next to you. As my father, Saul, is well aware. So the two of them renewed their solemn pact before the Lord. Then Jonathan returned home while David stayed at Choresh. Having lots of people around you is great, but nothing beats having a friend who would encourage us by pointing us to God. Yes, right? And that's what Jonathan did here for David, right? He encouraged him and strengthened his faith. To encourage means to, to make someone strong and courageous while waiting patiently on God. And so when we encourage someone, don't just say, come on, you can do it, right? Encourage them through God's Word. Remind them of God's promises because God's Word has power, right? Pray for them. I think these are just some of the examples of how we can encourage someone to stay strong in the faith. In my life, there's a pastor who calls me from time to time, randomly, <laughs> sometimes in the, during work and sometimes late at night. Honestly, um, most of the time, I kind of get annoyed when I see his caller ID. And it's usually because I'm either too busy or too stressed and just want to rest. But I can honestly say to you that not once have I ever regretted answering his calls. It's because I believe he is God's encouragement to me and is therefore always calling at the right time. Because in my thinking, you know, he's always calling at the wrong time, right? He always encourages me to do God's work and points me back to him whenever I get distracted. He asks me how I'm doing and um, whenever he prays for me, he, it always comes from the heart. Now, how about you? Do you have people who will bear the burden with you, who will encourage you, right? Are you part of a small group? And if you are, are you consistent and accountable? How do you expect people to encourage you if they don't know what's happening in your life, right? So let's not be passive and just wait for people to encourage us. Rather, let's initiate and make the first move. I pray that God would touch our heart to really love people and to encourage one another. So again, what have we learned so far? First is that we should respond in faith rather than in fear and that we should encourage one another. Don't be passive, but initiate and make the first move. And the last lesson we learn in David's life in this story, and the last point of this message, is that we should surrender and trust God. Surrender and trust in God. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 1, it says, David sang this song to the Lord on the day the Lord rescued him from all his enemies and from Saul. And so now let's fast forward in David's life. After everything that has happened, after God rescues him from all his enemies and from the hand of Saul, what did he learn? For us, you know, after this COVID season is over, what would we learn 
right? And that's what 2 Samuel chapter 22 is all about. David writes this long poem, 51 verses, which he sings to the Lord and celebrates his provision and his protection. Right? He sang, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and the place of my safety. He is my refuge, my savior, the one who saves me from violence. I called on the Lord who is worthy of praise and He saved me from my enemies. Wow, such a great poem. And this is just a small portion of it, right? So the theme of this poem is really all about that the Lord is our rock and our refuge. And we know this because the word rock is mentioned in the beginning, in the middle, and in the end of the poem. And so what does this mean, right? The word rock refers to a rocky terrain, similar to the ones David would hide in whenever he was chased by King Saul. And so the poem encourages us that despite the feeling that the COVID season is going to devastate our job or our business or our finances, is that we do not need to worry because the Lord is our rock and our refuge. We can run to Him and find shelter, right? We can hold on to Him because He is an anchor that does not move despite the chaos happening around us, right? Because God is our rock, we can surrender all of our concerns and our worries. So let us surrender our job, business, or finances and trust in Him to guide and lead us in the way that we should go. After all, He gives wisdom to all who ask, to all who surrender control. And so again, because God is our rock, let us surrender and trust in Him. And so let me share another verse which, which I think gives a complementary picture of what it looks like to really trust in the Lord. In Jeremiah 17, 7-8, it says, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So I really love this verse in Jeremiah because I think it gives such a nice picture of what it looks like to really thrive in this difficult season, an oasis in the desert, so to speak. So the verse says that, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, who put their security in Him, right? Notice that it doesn't say that there will be no heat or, lo or drought. Actually, the verse says that despite the long months of drought. Doesn't that sound like the COVID season we are in right now? So the verse says that despite the long months of drought, we can still be fruitful and vibrant because of our deep roots, because of our trust in the Lord. You know, in this picture, we see that everything else is just so dry. And then our eyes focus on these trees, right? Why are they still so green? It's because of their deep roots. How deep is our roots, right? How deep is our foundation? How deep is our trust in the Lord? When we surrender and trust in the Lord, the verse says that we will be like these trees, fruitful and vibrant. And so I pray that when, when people look at our lives, is that they will see us as such, like these trees. Because we have surrendered our job, our business, or finances, and have trusted in the Lord alone. Again, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, right? And this verse has been encouraging me for the past few days, especially uh, because of our business that's struggling, right? 
and I'm, I'm praying to the Lord, Lord, you said, right, blessed are those who trust in the Lord, for they will be like trees planted along the riverbanks. Our hope and our trust is in the Lord. So again, to recap, after everything that we've learned and talked about, is that we should rest in the season, that we should respond in faith rather than in fear, is that we should encourage one another, right? Don't just be passive, but initiate and make the first move. And lastly, is that we should surrender, surrender our job, our business, or finances, and trust in God alone. And to see what this looks like in life, I've asked a good friend of mine to share her life story. Hi, my name is Dana Jane Rohanan. I am an architect by profession. But last 2015, I went on full-time running TNC Rental and Event Services, a family-owned business. TNC Rental and Event Services started in 2010 with just 20 monoblock chairs and 7 plastic square tables. We initially provided for small family gatherings until eventually the clientele and the market grew. That's when we also realized the growing need for tables and chairs in Cebu for events have become more popular. In 2013, we were made aware that a few big and established tables and chairs rental companies are already existing in Cebu. It is therefore impossible to compete and venture into the same direction with them. So we wanted to be different. We decided to offer something different, something special. The idea of specialized tables and chairs came when a friend in the D group got wed in 2012. She was desperately looking for Hercules chairs for her beachside outdoor ceremony. She couldn't find any and ended up settling for Tiffany chairs. With a meager capital but with great confidence in God's wisdom and leading, we invested in our first special chair, the Hercules chair. The response in the wedding industry was positive. The corporate was also booking reservations. Since then, almost every year, we introduce new designs for our clients. In 2018, we started offering to events outside Cebu province. We frequent Bohol that on April 5, 2019, we made an announcement that we are opening a branch soon, although we weren't so sure yet how it would look like. As we dreamt and hoped for it to become a reality, the good Lord provided us opportunities to meet and partner with local furniture suppliers, wedding planners, coordinators, and stylists. Early 2018, I met a local coordinator who offered her house to store her items for free. She was even kind enough to house our staff and I if we have an event in Bohol. She would cook breakfast and even sometimes pick me up from the pair. While praying and searching for a good location of our warehouse, God answered my prayer through my college friend. On April 8, 2019, her wife messaged me and offered their property in Dawis, Panglao, and were willing to build a warehouse for us. The property is next door to the resorts in Panglao. May 2019, when we started brainstorming the floor plan, and around August, the construction started. We started 2020 with so much hope and faith in the Lord as we opened our branch in Bingag, Dawis, Bohol. We felt that's where the Lord is leading us, having been able to cater to quite a number of weddings in the island for the past three years. Through the help of our friends, we successfully had our simple yet memorable launching and dedication last January 12, 2020. We won't be able to do it without those people as they were God's instrument to make it possible. Although the rest of the year didn't go as we imagined it to be, we are still grateful for a lot of good things, including good health in the family, especially my two senior citizen parents, stronger bond and more quality time together, friends, love and support, and employment for the staff. Looking back, we are still floored how good God is, despite the many challenges we go through. I can't recount how many ways he continued to show himself that he is the God and owner of this business. We've been through many challenges for the last 11 years of operation, but none is quite like this during the pandemic. I realize the harder the challenges, the deeper God's grace is available for us. 
One very concrete example for me during this pandemic is the timing when my brother decided to go full-time last February 2019. God knows I have a very little threshold for stress. My brother absorbed every bit of stress. At the peak of the pandemic, he was responsible in making sure that our full-time and an on-call staff were provided with help, like food items and financial aid. During the five months with zero income from events, he was the one thinking of other ways of generating income. He made us survive those months without cutting pay and benefits for our full-time staff. Also, one of our worries during the lockdown was the warehouse rental because it is our biggest expenditure. The Cebu warehouse was supposed to end contract last June 2020, and around May, we were already contemplating if we need to downsize or close operation. That led us to sell some of our inventories. We thought that we only need to keep few and moving items. It was our desire to honor what we have agreed on the contract to end or renew by June, but evaluating the situation, it wasn't possible for us to renew the contract for another year. So I wrote an email to the owner expressing what we went through and our desire to stay, but couldn't afford with the original rental rate. God honored that desire by letting us stay and pay only 50% of the rental fee. It has been 10 months now since we experienced God's grace and favor through our landlady. The same thing happened to our Bohol warehouse. We were granted to pay half of the rental fee until December 2020. This year, I was so hesitant to message my friend for another discounted rate. In my mind, the warehouse was newly built for us, and they have not even earned from it yet. But I know in my heart that we really can't keep it by paying full with minimal income coming in from Bohol. So I just prayed. The next day, my friend messaged me and told me that if I continue to stay in 2021, she will continue to grant us 50% rental fee until the end of this year. Another answered prayer from the Lord. I have to admit that I was worried about my future. It didn't just affect the business at large, but it affected my being. I remembered there were days that I can't sleep mostly because I was so anxious of the future. Before the day ends, I started journaling down my thoughts. I write things that I am grateful for. During the day, I do my daily exercise to stable my mood. I listen to music while doing work. I have been a active, an active individual and having been on a lockdown for a long time seems unhealthy for me. To keep that normalcy, I volunteered to do the errands for my family. Jesus sends help in the form of friends sending food, notes of encouragement, and even videos and memes to brighten my day. There was even a friend whom I haven't spoken to for a long time messaged me and sent me money because she was impressed by God to do it. Friends who randomly ask how I am, then another friend whom I also have not spoken to invited me for a long drive to the beach. My constant communication with, with my friends in the industry helped me understand that I am not alone with my problems. Some have it worse, like they were forced to pay full rent of the office and some got bankrupt. My D-group family who are with me in prayer helped me realign my focus. My confidence is this, Jesus holds us together and he is our hope. He has great plans for us to those who love him. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Thank you and God bless you. I hope everyone uh, was truly blessed by her story about finding rest in God, especially in this COVID season, which is just so difficult for all of us, right? And so if you're someone who has lost your job or your business, or maybe you're, you're afraid that you will, I pray and hope that you were encouraged with tonight's message about resting in the Lord that we should always respond in faith, that we are not alone, and that we can just surrender it because we trust in the Lord, our God, who is both sovereign and good. So let's close in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we glorify you for who you are, magnificent and eternal. And it's just, you are so much higher than our comprehension. And yet you care for people like us. With this COVID season right now, it can just be so overwhelming. And sometimes we feel like everything's out of control. Maybe sometimes we feel like you're not even there or that you don't care. I pray that through tonight's message, Lord God, we are reminded that you are indeed with us, that you care for us, that you love us, and that everything you do for us is for our good. I pray that instead of responding in fear because of the situation, I pray that we would always respond in faith. And I know that you do reward faithfulness. I pray that you would fill us with your spirit, that we would always walk in the light of your word. And that, we, and that as we continue to be encouraged by you, Lord God, that we would pour out that same love and encouragement to other people because we know that there are so many people who need it, Lord God. Not so much our encouragement, but so much more they need you. I pray that we would indeed fully surrender our job, our business, our finances, and our future to you, knowing that you would take good care of us because you love us. And so I pray, Lord God, that all of us tonight would just trust in you, as your word has said. And we know that when we do so, we will be like trees planted along a riverbank with their roots so deep deep and founded in you and in your word. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Praise God for that wonderful message. Thank you so much, Tim, for blessing us with such godly wisdom on how to deal with loss during the new normal. It is true indeed that rest is not the absence of loss or storm, but being in the presence of God. Yes, indeed, Zell. What a great reminder that the presence of God makes all the difference. All right, at this point, we will now proceed to our breakout room. Link is flashed on your screen for our breakout session and for some icebreaker and games. Once again, this is your host for tonight. My name is Evie. And this is Zell. And we'll see you guys in Zoom. We'll see you Bye. Bye.